In this quick tips tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a weave pattern using rail clone. It's a common pattern that has many applications, perhaps most usefully natural fences and baskets. But for this example, we've taken inspiration from C18 architects who renovated the barrel ceilings of a chapel by cladding it with woven wicker. Along the way, we'll demonstrate some tricks for creating repeating patterns on the X and the Y axis using sequence operators, how to mirror and reuse geometry, and how to split a style into more than one generator. In this tutorial, I'm going to borrow some terminology from cloth making. When weaving, there are two types of thread or yarn. Warps are the vertical threads that would normally be held in tension on a frame or a loom. Woven alternatively over and under this are horizontal threads, and these are called wefts. And the same is true whether you're weaving wicker, straw, or any other materials. These two elements, warps and wefts, are what we need to simulate to create a woven style in rail clone. As always when working with rail clone, the aim is to manually model as little as possible. And for this example, we could get away with only two segments, one for the horizontal weft and another for the vertical warp. For the former though, in order to create a little more natural variation, we'll use four variations. These are very simple, created using just one spline and a sweep modifier. For the vertical sections, the warps, a simple straight spline is enough, as long as there are enough edge loops so that it can be deformed to follow a curve if needed. For different types of construction material, you could easily use a different cross section with the sweep modifier. But even then, this geometry is very easy to create. The only other thing to note is that the pivot of the z-axis for all the segments is positioned so that they align correctly and that they'll tile along the x-axis when mirrored and repeated. Moving on to the splines, as we're creating a two-dimensional array and because the roof will be curved on the y-axis, we need two splines. The easiest way to create splines for the A2S array is to use the top or perspective viewport and create them as follows. The first spline should be created straight along the x-axis. This will be used to define the length of the array. The second spline should be straight along the y-axis. This will be used to define the height of the array. The x-spline is pretty easy to understand as it defines the path of the array. The y-spline defines the shape and the orientation of the array on the y-axis and has the potential to cause more confusion. In Rail Clone 3 we've made this a little easier to understand. The length and the path of the array on the y-axis is defined by the shape of the array as defined on the y-z plane. So if you rotate the spline sub-object around the x-axis, you'll see that the array's orientation updates accordingly. In Rail Clone 2, the XY plane as opposed to the YZ plane was used to define the Y axis of the array. And this can be a little more confusing because in order to change the orientation of the array in Rail Clone 2, you would rotate the spline subobject around the Z axis, as you can see here. So Rail Clone 3 makes this easier, but it also has a new option that allows you to pick between the new, more intuitive settings or to use the legacy behavior if you prefer it or if you need to maintain compatibility with older styles. And that's it in terms of setup, now we can move on to creating the style itself, starting with the warp geometry. It often makes sense to divide a style across multiple generators. In this case we'll create two, one for the vertical elements and a second for the horizontal elements. If we were to try and combine these into a single generator, the height of the warp segment would need to match the height of the weft segment which would significantly add to the number of instances produced. In addition, the vertical elements would create a gap between the horizontal ones rather than allowing them to continue as though they are a single thread. So by separating this into two generators, both of these issues can be easily resolved. Create a new rail clone object, and then add an A2S generator. And just keep things nice and tidy, call it warp. Create a new spline node, and wire it to the generator's X spline input. Go to the properties panel, click the spline select button, and pick the X spline we just created from the scene. Create a second spline node and wire it to the generator's Y spline input. And this will pick the Y spline we created just a second ago too. Now create a new segment node. Go to the properties panel and pick the warp geometry object from the scene. Wire the segment node to the X evenly input and this will add vertical segments at regularly spaced intervals. Panel. And then the distance between the warps is controlled by the properties rules X evenly distance value. Adjusting this changes the scene. To make this easier to change later on, we can make the value accessible from the Modify panel. To do that, right click on the generator and go to Export Parameters. Select X Evenly, X Evenly Distance, and a new parameter input will appear at the bottom of the generator node. 
create a new numeric node, wire it to the x evenly distance input, and rename this node warp distance. Now if you look at the properties rollout in the modify panel, you'll see this parameter is accessible and can be edited without needing to open the style editor. For now, enter a value of 10 centimeters. And that's it, this is the finished graph for the warp element. So far, so good. Now we need a new generator for the weft geometry. It needs to have the same evenly distance and it uses the same splines. So we'll just duplicate it by selecting it, right clicking and selecting copy, right clicking again and selecting paste, and then moving it above the other generator. Because these two generators share the same spline and numeric inputs, they'll always remain perfectly synced. Change the generator's deform default mode to scale. In this mode, a single segment will be scaled between the evenly inputs. Because we duplicated it, the warp segment is still connected to the X evenly input. We can't just delete it because we need the segment in this input to ensure that the weft segments are scaled exactly between them. The easiest solution, therefore, is to create a new segment, but don't select any geometry. We usually call these null segments, and they're really useful for adding gaps or forcing rail clone to calculate certain inputs, even if we don't actually want any geometry to be present. So just wire this null segment to the X evenly input, replacing the existing. Now create a new segment node. We want to use the segment's pivot point, so change the alignment Z property to pivot. You should also decide if you want the segments to deform. If the X-spline is straight, as it is in this example at the moment, I would prevent a segment from bending by going to the Deform tab and disabling Bend. If, however, the path is curved, you'd probably want to leave this enabled so it can follow the shape of the curve. But you should be aware that deformed segments aren't instanced and may increase memory usage. In this scene, there are actually four weft objects that we'd like to shuffle. Instead of adding each one manually, which can take a little bit of time, right-click on the segment we just created and select Clone Multiple. An object picker window opens, allowing you to select multiple items. Select the weft objects and click Clone. All of them will be created, inheriting the same settings as we just created. To shuffle the four segments, create a new randomized node and connect the segments to its inputs. And then to create the alternating under, over, under pattern, create a new sequence operator and wire the randomize operator to the first input. Wire the sequence operator to the default input so that we can see now how the geometry looks. At the moment, we're getting a stepping effect like this. To resolve this, we need to create a version of these existing segments that's mirrored along the x-axis. We can then alternate between the mirrored and the normal versions. So to do this, create a new mirror node and wire the randomize node to its input. Wire the mirror node to the sequence node's second input. So far, so good. And if you change the order of the inputs in the sequence node, you'll notice that the under over pattern can be offset. This is important because we need to alternate between over and under on the y axis as well as the x axis, which can be achieved by alternating between two sequence operators, one of which has the order of the inputs swapped. So to do this, clone the sequence operator and just swap the inputs. Create another new sequence operator and wire the two existing sequence nodes to its inputs and then change the increment on value for the new sequence operator to Y. Wire it to the default input, and you've now created a repeating alternating pattern on both the X and the Y axis. Optionally, you can also repeat the number of times input is repeated. So to do this, select the sequence operator again and change the counter values. For example, we can change the value to two for the sequence operator that creates the pattern on the Y axis to give a different weft pattern. And finally, you may need to adjust the Z offset of the warp generator to make sure that it fits correctly into the gaps created by the weave pattern. And that completes the style. We can now reuse it easily by simply swapping the splines, for example, to create the roof shown at the beginning of this tutorial. Just go in and change the X spline to set the path, and then the Y spline for the shape. Fences, baskets, wicker baskets, trellis, and much more can be created with this technique. And the principles of combining sequence operators that increment separately on the X and the Y axis is really useful for creating all sorts of repetitive patterns. If you do create any interesting variations on this style, or if you have any renders created with these techniques, we'd love to see them on our forum. Otherwise, stay tuned for our next tips and tricks installment, and check out our other videos in the tutorial section of the website. <laughs>